today we're going to introduce the Trove range of products. Trove is about taking unstructured data, collating the information, structuring it, and then by putting in a number of analytical tools, creating knowledge and ultimately wisdom, all the sorts of things that we need to do to find petroleum. Now, Trove on the world map here, you can see the coverage. So it covers uh, essentially the entirety of offshore Northwest Europe, all the way down to the Mediterranean, the entirety of Africa, and right around the uh, Asia to uh, uh, Myanmar. We cover the Black Sea, Iraq, parts of the, uh, of, of the Caspian Sea, and Turkmenistan in particular. And then on the western side of the Atlantic, the entirety of uh, North America, offshore, the Gulf of Mexico, Mexico, the Caribbean, right the way down South America, all the way down to the Falklands Plateau. In addition to that, and uh, a subject for other an, another time, is the products that we have for liquefied natural gas, uh, renewables, pipelines and terminals, gas storage, energy storage, and carbon capture, usage and sequestration. So Trove, here's a typical sheet out of a, of a single asset. This one happens to be Tupi Field in Brazil. Uh, and you can see even at this low level, these, these low resolution thumbnails, uh, you can see various bits of information from seismic lines, and location maps, interpreted sections, uh, cross sections, various maps, location maps, write-ups on the field. Uh, and here you can see some very detailed technical subservice information. This is all available at the click of a button. What you would do is you would find the field you're interested in, click on its name, and it would take you to the corresponding tab, which would be full of information like this. But we've taken the information from here, we put it into these database tables here, and so it's collated all the information. And another way of looking at this is that if you see a number in Trove, you can actually find out where it comes from. And uh, too small to see here, but for each of these sources, there is a hyperlink to show where it comes from. So there is an audit trail back to, to so that we can see where the data comes from and what the number is. And then once it's collated, then we've got some high powered analytical tools where we can turn the information into, into knowledge and learnings. This is backed up with a series of graphs and other tools that we use and we'll go on to see more of those later. So <clears throat> if we start off now by uh, looking say at the range of, of uh, inputs we might get here from the Middle East. Uh, you can see that just by the click of a button, we can jump from Zor to Leviathan to Tamar. And you can see the sorts of information that's captured there, all in one place, all instantly accessible through Trove. For much of the rest of this talk, we're going to focus on the, the North Sea and uh, talk really about how we've combined all these uh, 15 enormous databases that we have at the bottom tier right across the UK, Ireland, Norway, Netherlands, Denmark, Germany, um, Faroes, and basically all those information have now been captured in one product, the Trove Northwest Europe. And, and this product actually then feeds the production analysis tool and the area analysis tool. And this talk today is going to show you just some of the powerful things that we can achieve by having a database as extensive as, as the Trove databases are in Northwest Europe. So here's an example showing basically all the prospects on a map and where they're located. And this is all available uh, within the Southern North Sea Trove and depths and risk and everything else is all captured within that particular product. Here's an example of the sorts of things we can we can plot just about anything against anything else for the entirety of Northwest Europe. These are graphs that are already prepared, they're formatted, and they show basically um, the information. Uh, if we look at one in a little bit more detail here, so this is a plot for all the data we have across the uh, Northwest Europe. 
uh, formation volume factor versus depth. And you can see with depth, uh, generally speaking, the formation volume factor tends to, uh, to rise. But we're showing a, a number of things here. In green, we're showing the fields and discoveries. We can, uh, again, just with a simple drop down, we could just pick out all those uh, fields that are in the, the, the Bray hub. So this would be uh, one of the one of the fields up on the flood and ground spur, um, like a West Bray. Uh, and then here's the more typical brays. Uh, over and above that, we can also pick out specific fields. So again, we could just pick out Ekafisk and for Orc. And then where we've actually gone and put in uh, an FVF in our prospect portfolio, it takes a few clicks of a button to, to actually import all of a company's prospect portfolio and, and we can quickly compare what's being assumed for those prospects at this depth. You'd certainly be wanting to question the, the reservoir engineer as to why such a high formation volume factor. We can then go on and see a variety of maps. We could look at all the gas condensate fields. We can just highlight all the Permian reservoirs. We can highlight all the fields that tie into the 40s pipeline system. Or indeed, we can look at unsanctioned discoveries and we just look across international borders. They are absolutely transparent. Um, we can look on one side or the other and see if we can actually look to come up with some sort of a hub analysis bringing together various fields that on their own perhaps are not economic, but if they were developed in conjunction with another opportunity, then maybe they could be made to work economically. Just going to look at production analysis. This is one of the Trove tools and we're going to look at how we use this in reserves forecasting. Now, we can take any hub. In this case, we're looking at the, the shell operated Gannett complex in the central North Sea. And here we can see the various fields that constitute the Gannett complex. Then what we can do is we can actually look at stacking these profiles. And uh, here we're seeing in the top left, we're seeing both the oil profiles and the water profiles for each field. And quickly being able to see, well, where is the where is the entire hub up to? It's obviously still producing uh, up until around about the end of 2019, producing around about 20,000 barrels of oil, which is really what's going to drive the economics of the hub uh, rather than it being a single field. So um, another thing that we could look at here is we could see that in the past it's been able to operate at this sort of total liquid level. But in more recent times over here, you can see that total liquids it looks like it, there's been a lot less. So if things haven't changed too much, it might imply that there's sort of 20,000 barrels of ullage available at the, at the host at Gannett A. However, on closer inspection, we can actually see that when we look at in terms of just the water production profile, we can see that it's actually getting very, very close to the 60,000 produced water handling capacity, which is published as, as part of the ICOP initiative. So definitely an opportunity if water production can be reduced in the Gannett area. We then go on and look at all the various individual field forecasts. So basically in terms of green is oil, blue is water, you can see the oil forecast, the water forecast, the gas forecast. And we can see through looking at the, the water oil ratio versus cum oil plot how good a fit that we get here what we do is both monthly and annually we give the production profile which is coming from uh, our, our assumption and our analysis here. And we're also giving a variety of numbers and outputs for these useful things like how much oil has been produced up to, in this case, December uh, 2019, though we update that quarterly. We would estimate the COP for the field. We would also have things like the total ultimate recovery. We can choose a technical COP, so we're not looking at the economics here. We're just simply looking at a water or a ratio, and we can we can have a look at different water cuts. You know, we can look at a, what the field would do up to 91% water cup, up to 98%, and see the impact that that would have both on the date of COP and indeed on the other reserves and the ultimate recovery. When we look at it together as a hub, it becomes even more powerful for looking just how long 
and how much a particular hub could be valued at. We can look at lots of different hubs. Okay, we've looked here at not just Gannett A, but we can look at all the profiles for all the fields in a particular area. We can also, in another case, we could just highlight or hear the Balmoral FPU. Um, and here is another one with Ekafisk and uh, an unusual profile in that we've got this decline followed by a prolonged period of over a decade of incline. There is a, a video on our YouTube channel which discusses the Ekafisk hub in more detail. We can also look at the maturity of all the producing assets in the North Sea just on, on one map. We can run this, uh, we run it the model quarterly um, and we can run it for a variety of assumptions so we can either put in specific um, economic thresholds for platforms or we can run it just with a technical CFP to a particular water cut for example. I'd now like to move on and just look at Trove area analysis and just going to show you that having built the databases it's now actually quite easy for us to, to go in there and get some very meaningful information out. So the first thing that we would do is we would just choose a, a latitude and longitude. Um, it could be anywhere in the North Sea, in fact anywhere on this sort of map. Then what we do is we basically change the, the cells that are green colored so here we've chosen Gannet A we can choose a different range that we're looking at so that could be up to 200 kilometers if we wished um, and then we can set a minimum resource or reserve size in this case we're looking at discoveries as contingent resource and prospects um, as, uh, as a prospective resource and then we've chosen that the prospective resource will be a risk basis for this particular analysis. And then we can see on the top here, you can see that the origin is the Galate platform itself. And as we move to the right, we, we move and see increasing distance and we see where the resources come in. Now at around about seven kilometers, there is a reportedly 250 million barrel oil equivalent uh, discovery. Um, and then as we move up, some of these other steps are showing that there are discoveries of a significance, probably 30, 40, 50 million barrel type discoveries. Here we have to move all the way out at around about 48 kilometers. Uh, we're actually coming up to, uh, this happens to be pilot. On this slide, we can see that we can break out the discoveries and opportunities by type, whether it be oil, heavy oil, uh, here condensate or indeed gas so generally speaking there is a significant gas condensate play within the region but there's also a black oil play uh, we have to go some distance before we get to heavy oil or gas in these pictures below we can see this crosshairs would be the location of the gannet a and this is effectively a map showing up to 50 kilometers in in any direction and we can see this very large discovery here at seven kilometers in map view and this happens to be pilot here. We can see some of these smaller ones actually would be significant but currently they're overshadowed by this large one and finally we can apply the filters to remove some of the small ones clean up the image and what we're seeing here is uh, we're seeing in orange the discoveries in the region and in red we're seeing the prospects. This sort of analysis is, has great value for both the buy and sell side uh, in basically acquisitions and divestments. So you can actually show the upside that may exist in and around Gannett, both uh, for the seller to show this and for the buyer to justify the purchase of the asset. And it's not just a map, but here you can see that we have increasing distance for at the top here, we're showing basically the prospects and underneath we're showing the discoveries. These are some of the parameters we could list out. There are many others that could be chosen. And again, it creates value using this tool for the buy and sell side. We create reports looking at all the um, significant discoveries in and around the, the North Sea by area, by stratigraphy, 
um, by proximity to an asset and we can prepare these sorts of uh, sheets here which summarize the opportunity this is bridges castletown opportunity over in the irish sea but one of the powerful things is to be able to look at the entire entirety of the north sea as one basin without stopping at, at international boundaries so in this here we're actually showing that the numbers that are featured within trove and, and this will be out of date now but there's over 1850 fields and discoveries all characterized within the trove databases there's 2400 plus prospects the majority of which um, are in the UKCS primarily because the source is uh, it incorporates just about every relinquishment report uh, that's ever been published by DEC or OGA over the years um, less coverage of prospects on the Norwegian Danish German or Netherlands sectors but we do have some and likewise there are prospects uh, in and around uh, west of Britain and Ireland. On the same map here, just to show some of the other capability of Trove, we can actually look at the occurrence of both onshore and offshore wind farms of wave and tidal schemes shown in yellow. And in red, you can see a variety of geothermal schemes that exist in and around Northwest Europe. And this is being added to all the time. This map's very useful where we can actually tell where the fields are by the stratigraphic age of the, the reservoirs. And you can see some of the major features here. We can also look at the prospects and leads by age across, in this case, the majority of the, the UK CS, uh, but also includes a lot of Irish data. We don't have as many prospects uh, in other countries in Northwest Europe because they don't produce uh, relinquishment reports. Um, however, as that information becomes available, we add it all of the time. Here we can see, for example, in the Southern North Sea, we can see the Rocklegens and the Zextan prospects. To the north of them in orange here, we can see the Carboniferous prospects. And then as we go to the Mid-North Sea High, we see the combination of the two of them. Comparing them side by side gives us a bit of information, really picks out this trend up here of this Cretaceous play that is not so obvious when we look just here within the, uh, the fields and discoveries, but certainly a significant trend. You can compare and contrast both fields, discoveries, prospects and leads across the region. We've actually got a, an MSc student at Aberdeen University currently looking at the uh, Triassic fields and comparing those in the Netherlands with the Triassic prospects but uh, some 10 prospects in the southern part. Within Trove, we can go as far as even helping with uh, flow assurance screening. So having seen the proximity of fields to a hub, we can look at the various parameters of uh, reservoir pressure, depth, temperature, reserve size, or gravity. And we can come up with an assessment of how many wells would be required and what size pipeline would be suitable uh, and basically the tie bank length. So this analysis uh, we, we've done in conjunction with ACA solutions uh, for uh, various clients and essentially it's using the, the Beggs and Brill methodology. We supply the data and, and ACA solutions um, have the capability to quickly run a flow assurance and that can highlight very early on in concept selection which tie backs that would be feasible uh, and couple that with the production analysis where we can assess how long the, the hubs may be producing for and available to actually tie back to and also get some indication at a screening level of any sort of knowledge issues so very powerful tools and finally uh, a new product uh, which we will have ready for when industry or the business uh, starts up again post COVID-19, uh, which will be basically looking at uh, the activity worldwide. And this is going to be uh, Trove Wells to Watch. And what this will do is just look at all the opportunities in the world, capture the timings, the operators, the countries, the wells of deep water and shallow water and various other um, 
technical information that will help particularly uh, companies understanding what activity is going on with the competitors and in adjacent areas but also uh, helping the supply chain with understanding where the opportunities may be. The sort of information that you get, again, as in Trove, we would find not just the, the asset itself, but give some information as to where it is, what it is, and who all's involved in that. That's a quick look at the Trove product range. There's more to come, so keep watching. Please like, subscribe, and forward and share our video with people you think would be interested. If you need any further information, please contact us at info at firstsong.com. We look forward to talking with you in the future and I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care, bye for now.